Good morning and happy fall break. If you got a fall break, happy fall if you didn't get a fall break. Either way, happy fall. And uh, I hope that you are enjoying this amazing weather. And man, if you haven't been here the last couple weeks or if this is your first week here, we've been in a message series where we're just going straight through the book of Philippians. And uh, man, it's been so good. Justin uh, filled in for me last week and I, I really appreciate that. And he's awesome. And I know that he did an amazing job. Um, I do, before I get into my message, just want to stop and thank you uh, for supporting me and uh, for loving me. Thank you for the hugs. And, and the meals and all the things that you guys did last week. Um, if you don't know, if it's your first week here, uh, I lost my dad last week. And so it was a really tough week. And um, man, you guys showed me what community is all about. You came around our family and, and you just rub, loved us really well. And so thank you. Um, I want you to think back to when you were a kid for a second. And all of a sudden somebody tells you that you're going to the doctor. And when you walk into the, the doctor's office, uh, as a kid, your first thought is not, oh man, I'm going to the doctor. Your first thought is, where's the playroom, right? Where's the, where's the stuff, where's the toys? And at least for me, when I was a kid, I don't know about you, I mean, this probably shows how old I am. I like the, the little thing where it had the, the circles and you did them all through the little thing. And it was probably a counting toy. I was not doing that. I was just, you know. Um, that was my toy that I always went to. Maybe for you it was cars or whatever. But, um, but yeah, when I went to the doctor's office as a kid, I had this amazing distraction that made me forget that I was at the doctor's office. And if you, can any of you guys relate? You guys do that? Okay. And maybe, maybe now you're taking your kids and, and you kind of look forward to that. And, and honestly, uh, it's a good distraction. It's a good distraction for, for why you're there. And I think in the same way, um, your life may not be going exactly as planned. It may not be going exactly how you had hoped it would go. But even in the middle of that, God can give you joy that is kind of a distraction from, from your circumstances. God can give you joy in the middle of things that aren't exactly amazing. And so that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today, is this joy that um, can distract us from our discomfort or, or our difficulty or our pain, whatever it is. And so we're going to jump right into Philippians 4, verse 1. If you have your Bible, I would encourage you to open it up. Um, if you don't, it will be on the screen this morning. And, um, and I would encourage you, if you have a paper Bible, man, underline stuff, circle stuff, uh, make notes, write in your Bible. It's okay to write in your Bible. And, uh, and take notes this morning and really, uh, really see what, God is, what is God saying to you this morning. Uh, what, what is God saying to your heart this morning? So let's start with, with verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. So verse 1, it, uh, Paul's just saying, man, joy now and also joy in heaven. Paul's saying for him, because of you guys know Jesus. He's like, you Philippians, man, you, you give me joy now that I'm going to have forever because you know Jesus. And he's kind of saying that he's proud of them. He's proud of, of who they are. And he's telling them to stand firm. Stand firm. Be strong. And then in verse 2, it says, I entreat, man, these words, these names, they, they get me. Um, I actually looked both of these up and listened to the YouTube thing on how to say them. And I'm still going to say it wrong. But anyways, I entreat Uoda, and I entreat Sintash, that's what it said, to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored, labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say, rejoice. And then it says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. So, Paul is addressing the one problem that the Philippian church has, and you'll ne it, it's crazy. It, the one problem in the Philippian church is these two women that can't seem to get along, and they're not talking to each other, they're not getting along, and he, he felt like it was important enough 
to address it in the letter. Like, hey, guys, can you help these two figure their stuff out? This is kind of ridiculous. But it does, it does show us that if there's any conflict in the church between us, um, we need to figure it out. It matters. It matters to God that we're at peace with each other and that we're united. And, um, and then in verse 4, uh, it, it talks about this joy. It says, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, in the, in the Lord I say rejoice. He's repeating it. It's for emphasis. And I just want you to, to think about joy for a second. Joy is not something that you can create. Joy is not something that you can just kind of muster up. You can't produce joy. It's a fruit of the Spirit. And so what you need to know about joy is that joy comes from God. And it has nothing to do with your circumstances. I'm going to say that again. Joy comes from God and has absolutely nothing to do with your circumstances. If you're taking notes, uh, the first big point I want you to write down is a prayer we need to pray. A prayer we need to pray. Uh, this ne- the next two verses here, verses uh, 6 and 7, they, they show us how to pray. Uh, they show us why we pray. And then they tell us what happens if we pray. So that's kind of what's about to happen. Hopefully you recognize these couple verses, verse 6 and 7. And it says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so he says a couple things here. First, he says, don't worry about anything. Little stuff, big stuff. Don't worry about anything. Why? Why should we not worry? Because when we worry, it steals our joy and it, and it robs us of our peace. Then, so he says, don't worry about anything, big or small. Uh, and, and even Matthew 6, 27, it says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? It doesn't help us to worry. An hour, man, I can fly on that. And he's saying, even, you're not even going to get an hour. You're not going to get any, you're not going to gain anything from worrying. And second thing um, is to pray about everything. Same thing, big or small, pray about everything. It all matters to God. Um, And I would just encourage you not to just pray big, kind of empty prayers that really are kind of meaningless. Like, God, help me have a good day and keep me safe. Ooh, wow, that's a man, you know. Why not something more specific like, God, can you help me trust you with my future? God, can you help me today to love the people that are really annoying in my life? God, can you help me in, in my marriage? Can you help me in this conflict that I, what I have with this other person? Can you help me at work? I'm having a really hard time having the motivation to go to work this week. Can you help me with that? Instead of just praying words that we, we don't even know what we're saying because we've said it so many times. Pray about everything, big or small. Pray specifically. God cares and, and he wants to hear your heart, not just some words. So Paul says, bring God your problems and God will give you his peace. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good exchange, right? You bring God your problems and then God in exchange gives you his peace. Um, I I brought my backpack here today. Uh, I just, this made me think of this, okay? Made me think of this, this just an idea here. That a lot of us walk around and we're carrying a lot of problems. Okay? We have a lot of different problems. And so problems from our past, um, problems deep down in our soul, you know, insecurities, fears, whatever. We have problems. We all have problems. We're people. And we carry them around. And what this verse is saying is if you give God your problems, then he's going to give you peace. And so some of us interpret that as, um, you know, well, God, um, can you... Let's see if I can find, oh, here's something. God, if, if you could just help me find a parking spot. And that's, that's, you know, and we're still carrying this thing. And we're like, God, if, man, can you just help me, help, help me with my test this week? We got these little rocks coming out of there, but I mean, 
God, can you just help me uh, today? Uh, I'm really tired. And th there's nothing wrong with those things, but guys, like, come on, you know? We have problems. And some of us don't even realize, we're, we're, not, even, we don't, we don't, we're not even being honest with the fact that we have this backpack on, that we have issues. We're just kind of... And I think what God wants us to do is literally take our problems and give them to him, all of them, the deep, hard stuff that we don't want to talk about. And some of us were like, wait, <laughs> you know, it's okay, God, I just, I mean, because I, we want to control it, you know, it's all right, I'll just kind of, I'll just do it with one arm, it's not so bad, it's not so bad, you know, I don't even feel it, I don't even know it's there. And we just tried it, and then, or some of us were like, what, what problems, you know, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. But what we do is we try to live our life like we don't have this big fat burden on our back. And that's not how we're meant to live our life. God says, give me your problems and I'll give you your peace. And guys, some of us in this room today, we're just not being honest with God or anybody else about what we're dealing with. And so my encouragement to you this morning and what Paul's saying is hand it over to God. Like deal with it. Let it go. It's not that it's not there anymore. It's that you're not carrying it. It's not that your circumstances have necessarily changed. It's just that now you can handle it because God's going to give you peace in the middle of it. When, when we hand it over to God, you know what he gives us? He gives us peace that doesn't even make sense. That's what the Bible says. Peace that passes understanding. Like it literally, to other people, it doesn't make sense that you would have peace. Like what is wrong with you? Do you not see your life? Do you not see the problems that you're struggling with? That's the kind of peace that God can give us in the middle of it. And, and I like what it says, it, that it guards our heart and our minds. So this peace, literally, that only God can give us, it will guard our hearts and our minds. It protects us from worrying. Don't you want to be protected from worry? Man, give your problems over to God. And again, they may still be there, but you're not carrying them anymore. That weight is not on you. you will, you'll feel the peace of God that only He can give you. And then, I don't want you to miss this, and I, I'm going back a little bit, but on verse 6, it says, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. So, so we do this with thanksgiving. Thank, thankful that God can handle our burdens. We're thankful for our past and, and what God's done in our life, but um, we're also thankful for our future. And we don't even know what it is because we trust God. We're thankful for what He's done, but we are looking forward to what God is going to do. I love the quote, I think it's Tim Tebow, that says, I don't know what my future holds, but I know who holds my future. I love that. Let's continue in verse 8. It says, and follow with me, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What have you learned and received and heard and seen in me? Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So that's our encouragement this morning, is to practice thinking about these things. This maybe is your assignment for the week. Think about these things, whatever is true and honorable and just and pure. Think about these things. Man, is it not so easy to focus and obsess over the things that aren't going right in our lives? It is so easy to focus on only that and not see the good gifts that God is giving in the middle of it. I think sometimes, and, and even I've, I was guilty of it this last week, with everything that's going on, with losing my dad, it's so easy to focus on what's wrong and not see what's right. And Paul is saying, hand over, hand over your problems, and, and God is, is able to give you this peace, and, and if we will just 
let go and surrender, but also focus on what God is doing. Focus on the positive things. Uh, it was hard last week for me to say goodbye to my dad. I literally said goodbye to him uh, in a hospital bed in there, and it was the hardest thing ever to let go of his hand. My dad, um, when I was holding his hand, when I was telling him goodbye, uh, I just had this memory because he has all these scars on his hand. I was there when he got those. Uh, my dad was up in this tree, and he, was, he had a chainsaw. I don't know what he was thinking. And so he's like reaching way out to cut this thing, and he's up on this. And all of a sudden, I just see the saw go like that. And then it came back, and, and it wasn't going, but it, it got his hand really bad. Came running down the ladder, and, and I remember I took my shirt off, and we wrapped it, and we jumped in the truck. I think I was about 15, so I wasn't driving yet. So he's driving with one hand and shifting on the column, you know. And, and we get to the, to the hospital, and they stitched them all up. And I'm just saying, um, man, I, I had that flashback this last week, and just looking at his hands and, and who he was, and uh, man... I can't, the, the way that I'm going to get through this is focusing on the good times, focusing on who my dad was de- down deep in his soul. He loved Jesus and he loved our family. And, and I guess what I just want to say this morning is, can we just focus on the good? Like, shoot, if you watch the news at all right now, there, it's hard to see the good like it is. But there's good happening. There's life change happening in our church. God is moving. There are good things happening in your life and in your family. And so I think what Paul is saying is, he's not saying there's nothing bad going on. He's just saying, can we focus on the good stuff? Can we be thankful for the good stuff that is happening? So if you're taking notes, I want you to write this. A principle we need to learn. A principle we need to learn. And I want to read verses 10 through 13 together because that's how it's supposed to be read and written. A lot of times we just read 13, but I think it, it needs to be read together. So... Verse 10, ready? It says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, or I have learned, underline this, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. We just sang that a minute ago. I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound in every circumstance. I've learned the secret of facing plenty, of hunger and abundance and need. And then he says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That that verse comes after, hey, I've been brought low. I've had hard times, but I've also had good things. I've seen good things. In whatever situation you're in, with God, it's possible to be content. Whatever situation you're facing right now in your life, with God, it's possible to be content. In fact, you can do all things through Christ who's going to give you the strength to be content. You see how that all goes together? Yesterday, I did a wedding actually last night, 6.30. The sun was going down. It was beautiful. It was an outdoor wedding. Um, and I thought of this part of the scripture when I, when I was doing the vows, and it says, in sickness and in health, and in, uh, in joy and pain, richer for poorer, till death do us part, right? That's exactly what this is talking about. That's exactly what those vows are saying. That's what you vow when you, when you vow to marry someone, is that no matter what, I'm going to be there, and that, that is the way that God loves us. And we, we have the ability, again, to be content no matter what's going on. We have the ability to do all things, to bear all things, not because we're awesome, but because our God is. And He'll carry us through whatever. Okay, if you're taking notes, the last big thing I want you to write down is a promise we need to claim. A promise we need to claim. All right, let's read verse 14. It says, Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into a partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you gave me, uh, or you sent me help for my needs once again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit 
that increases to your credit. I've received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God, underline this if you don't have it already underlined in your Bible, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So Paul is, is recognizing the Philippians and he's saying, hey, um, thank you for supporting me financially so I could go share the gospel with people. Other people didn't always give to his mission of going and sharing the gospel, but the Philippians did. And so he's saying, thank you for that. And he's also saying that he recognizes that God took care of him through the Philippians. And he's saying, hey, just like God took care of me, he's going to supply all of your needs too. So I, I love that he stops to say this. Hey, even though, even though I know everything that I have comes from God, um, God used you, but man, God will always supply everything you need. God will always supply. He is our source. He is enough. And there is a big difference between a want and a need. I think we need to recognize that. <laughs> um, there's a difference there. But God will supply your needs. He will supply everything you need uh, to do everything that he's called you to do. Uh, verse 20, I, I don't want us to miss this little sentence also. Uh, he, he stops and, and says that God, God should get the glory. And so I just want to ask you a kind of a personal question is that when God provides for you, does God get the glory? And so how, what does that look like? It looks like, do you thank him and recognize that every single thing that you have comes from God? So do you thank God? And then do you tell people that, man, God, God's taking care of me? Like, do you tell your kids, hey, whenever you sit down to eat, hey, we have this food because of God. He, he is providing for us. I have this great job that God has provided and has provided this food. You know, I, it's just a question. Are you thankful and are you sharing with people that, that you realize that everything you have comes from God? Maybe, maybe this afternoon, take a minute and just write a little list of some things that you're thankful for. That is never a bad idea. Just stop and recognize what God has done and is doing in your life to provide for you, to provide for your family. Man, maybe do it on your phone. Just get your notes and just make a list. What are you thankful for? And recognize what God has done and then tell somebody about it. Tell somebody. Maybe it's your, your spouse or your, or your or a friend or your kids. I think that's a, a, great, a great idea. And then Paul ends this, this letter um, in this chapter this final greeting, and he says, uh, verse 21, Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. And the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And so this is like the end of a text, like the end of a, a phone call. Paul just says, hey, everybody here loves you guys. You know, see you guys later kind of thing. And, um, and then he says, may God's grace be with you. What, what a gift to be able to give God's grace to people. See, God gives you grace like crazy that you don't deserve, you can't earn it, but God gives you this grace. And how cool is it that we get to give that grace to other people? As followers of Jesus, we should be the most grace-filled people because of the ridiculous grace that God gives us. We should not be the most judgmental people shouldn't be hard on people because the grace that God gives us should just overflow out of our life. And I love that's how he ends this. So this morning, I just want to ask you a question. Are, are you content? Even in the midst of whatever you're going through, are you content? Are, are you thankful for what God has provided? And have you told him? Also, have you, are you carrying around a backpack of problems that you're feeling it, man? Your relationships around you are feeling it. People are being affected by the fact that you are not handing your problems over to God, and you don't have the peace that comes from God, and that's affecting you personally. 
I don't know where you're at with those things this morning, but at this time, we're going to have a time of response. And I want you to answer those questions uh, in your own mind, in your heart, and then deal with it. If you need to surrender some problems over to God, pray to Him. Just talk to Him right where you're sitting. If you, if you need prayer, if you need to pray with somebody, if you, if you, need, some, you need a process with somebody, uh, me and a couple other guys will be uh, in the back. We'd love to pray with you. Or maybe you're here today and you're like, you know what, I don't, I don't have a relationship with God and, and my life is not working and I know that I need help and I need Jesus in my life. If that's you, we'd love to talk with you this morning. If you would just bow your heads at this time. God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your grace that you just pour out on us. God, I ask you during this time to, to move in our hearts. God, help us be honest with you about the areas that we're trying to hold on to, the areas that we're trying to control. And God, give us the strength to surrender to you. Whatever it is, whatever our problems are, whatever it is that we're struggling with. God, help us to be content and thankful for the way that you do provide for us, the way that you love us, the grace that you give us. So God, we just want to respond to you in this time. We just want to sing out to you and worship you. We want to talk to you. So we just give these next few moments to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.